I'm discovering fire. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe and wait till the end of the video where you're gonna get some information on how to win one of three Apple TV 4Ks that we're giving away over the next couple of weeks while we are reviewing a bunch of these uh, streaming devices. But for now, let's talk about the Amazon Fire Stick and the Fire Stick 4K. So that's what we've got right, hang on, it's frowning. There we go, now it's an Amazon Fire Stick 4K. So what we have right here, now we're reviewing both devices partly because Frankly, they're more similar than they are different. They are gonna look and smell and feel very similar, but there are some important differences. But let's start with the device itself, which is basically the same thing that you're gonna get either way. Now, similar to something that she once said, it's a little bigger than I expected. And this matters because it plugs into an HDMI port on the back of your TV. And if that is facing out of the back of your TV, you can see how much space you'd need between the TV and the wall. So if you don't want to deal with that, they do provide an HDMI extender it doesn't extend it very far, but what it does is it allows you to kind of hang or dangle that thing off the back of your TV. You can see it takes up a little bit less room that way, uh, so they do give you some options. And apparently this gives you better uh, Wi-Fi signal anyway, so something to consider. Now a device like this is going to typically work by Wi-Fi, but if you do prefer an Ethernet connection, that is available too with a device that's sold separately. It's an Ethernet adapter that you can plug this into and run ethernet through. So if you prefer that kind of connection, you do have that available sold separately. Now this device is plenty fast. Don't worry about lag. There are some very, very cheap uh, streaming devices out there from companies that I will not name <laughs> at this moment, but those do tend to lag just a little, but this you will not have a problem with. It's a really slick experience. No problem with lag there. Another thing that's exactly the same is the remote. This is the same thing you would get on either the Fire Stick or the Fire Stick 4K. It does have volume and a power button for the TV itself. So once you get it hooked in and set up, you're able to just use the one remote for your TV and the Fire Stick itself, which is obviously very convenient. The other convenient thing it has right here is the Alexa button. So if you wanna tell the Fire Stick to do something like open Hulu, it'll do that for you eventually. I do wish though that it would let me dictate, like when I need to enter an email address or something, it would be nice if I could just fake email address at email.com. Yeah, it's not gonna work. It is something that the Apple TV will do for you. I wish it worked on here. Unfortunately, it doesn't. The good news is you can hook up your phone and using the app there, uh, you can type in everything there. So if you're doing a lot of email addresses and passwords, like during the setup phase, that can be a lifesaver. This will take a little while. Now for the differences between the two, the major one is going to be the fact that the Fire Stick does full HD, 720p, 1080p, 60 frames per second, which will matter for sports fans, um, but it doesn't do 4K. That's where the Fire Stick 4K comes in. Surprise! It does 4K, it also does UHD and uh, HDR and Dolby Atmos surround sound and all the things that you would expect from a premium version of something like this. It does it for a few extra bucks and we'll talk about that pricing in just a moment. Another thing that's gonna be pretty much the same is the interface. This works the same way on the Fire Stick or the Fire Stick 4K. The difference obviously is going to be in the video quality on the 4K if you have a 4K TV. Now the interface is really slick. If you've ever used an Apple TV, uh, something along those lines, you're going to recognize this. It feels a lot like uh, the Apple TV platform, the uh, Google's Android TV platform. It feels a lot like all those, so you shouldn't have any trouble navigating this. Uh, one thing that does bother me, and, and a lot of things do this now, Netflix does this now, but in the middle of the interface, I'm getting an autoplay to add for their content. This drives me crazy. If it drives you crazy too, you can actually go up here to the settings. And this is something I like about the Amazon Fire is it's got pretty intuitive settings. If you're willing to put just a minute into it and take a look at your options, you can go over here to preferences. You can see you know, parental controls and privacy stuff, but you can go down here to featured content and turn off autoplay. And now when I go back to the home screen, I'm not going to be bothered with a bunch of stuff like that. 
Little things like that are very intuitive, easy to find, like I said, if you're willing to just put in a little bit of effort. So maybe my only real complaint with the Fire TV system, including both the hardware and the software, is the fact that it tilts so heavily toward Amazon content. And this is obvious and understandable, but if you're scrolling through and you see something that you like, they're going to really point you toward the Amazon version of it. So if you see a movie that you wanna watch uh, and you click through, it's going to encourage you to get that on Amazon Prime. Uh, now, is that a big problem? Certainly not if you're a Prime user, but if you're somebody who likes to stay a little bit more brand agnostic, or if you prefer to use Google or Apple's ecosystems, then this won't be quite as friendly to you. And lastly, let's talk about price. Normally for the Fire Stick, you'd pay 40 bucks, and for the Fire Stick 4K, you'd pay 50. But right now, Amazon is doing a promotion where the Fire Stick is 30 and the 4K version is 40 bucks. I don't know how long that promotion is going on, so if you're thinking about one of, the, one of these devices, now would be a good time. But what do you get for that 10 bucks difference? Well, it really just goes back to that video quality. So if you have an older TV that doesn't do 4K, maybe it's not worth it for you to get this version. But it's only 10 bucks more and it kind of future-proofs you in case you want to get a little bit better TV down the road, you still have that option of using this 4K device for only 10 bucks. Personally, I'd say it's worth it, but I wanna hear what you have to say. Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of Amazon's Fire TV ecosystem as well. Hit those comments and on your way, make sure you give this video a like and a subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time. We are giving away an Apple TV 4K, three of them actually. So hit the description below. There's a link there where you can get all the details. Like, comment, share. There's a bunch of ways that you can enter to win this. We're doing this until June 19th, 2019. So if you're watching this before then, then congratulations, you can still enter. If it's after that, then hello from the past. Ooh.